In today's video, we'll focus in on the lunchtime hour. This is the East Coast lunchtime hour, really trying to answer one simple question. Should you avoid trading during this hour, or is this hour rather profitable or beneficial with most traders away from their desk? Now my answer to this is to avoid trading this hour for those who would like to skip this entire video, but throughout the course of this video, I'd like to show you why and we'll use some very simple code to help illustrate this idea. Now coming inside of our Thinkorswim platform, I have just one study loaded on my chart to begin with, and this is the volume average study. Now here we can write some simple code that makes it very easy for us to go back and study different lunchtime hours to try and gain an understanding of what tends to happen. Now the first thing we can do is create a study that makes it easy to identify this lunchtime hour so we can scroll back as many days as we'd like and we don't need to keep zooming in to find the specific time of the lunchtime uh, hours. For that, let's use the add vertical line function and I'll create an add vertical line to mark the beginning and the end of the lunchtime hours. So for this we can say seconds till time and we'll set this equal to 12 o'clock. This is an Eastern Standard Time and that should be equal to zero. If that's true, this is the beginning of the lunchtime hour. We can give this a color of say orange. Then we can add one more similar line, this time tracking the end of the lunchtime hour. So I'll say 1300 hours and this time lunch is equal to end click apply and now we have two lines on our chart that mark the beginning and the end time of the east coast lunch hour my chart is in pacific time so you'll see that's 9 to 10 a.m pacific if you're on central time you'll notice that's staggered by an hour and if you're on east coast time this would be 12 to 1 p.m uh, pacific as well that draws on your charts now that we have uh, the two lines drawn on Let's create two more variables, which allows us to see what tends to happen with volume as we're in this lunchtime hour. Now, from my observations, and these are purely anecdotal, I've noticed that volume tends to spike towards the end of the lunchtime hour, along with the beginning of the very next hour. So somewhere in between there, we have a large spike. If we take a look at, say, today's activity here, we can see very similarly, we had a spike in volume, and we had price activity have a pretty sharp sell-off the second the lunchtime hour ended, traders are back at the desk, the markets moved. So let's try and see if there's any truth to this going back more than just today's price activity. For that, I'll create one more variable here. We'll call this a test hour. And here we can use the same seconds till time function. So I'll say seconds till time, but in this case, let's say go to something like 12 45 so this is towards the end of the lunchtime hour so if our seconds till this time are less than or equal to zero meaning we're at this time or later and we'll create our second variable tracking 15 minutes into the next hour so we'll say 13 15 and if that's greater than or equal to zero then make this condition true now beyond that we can add in a volume test as well so i'll say test volume and here we can use the volume average study which is right down here below so i'll say is our volume greater than the volume average study set to the 50 period symbol and its volume average so the average line this yellow line is our current volume greater than that average line if that's true return one otherwise return zero now we have two boolean conditions here so let's go ahead and combine these two so I'll say something like plot signal. We can say if we're in test hour and test volume is true, then return one, otherwise return zero. We can plot this using set painting strategy. We'll keep this simple painting strategy dot boolean points. So this should draw a very simple point on our chart, a dot on the candles if we have greater than average volume and we're between uh, 15 minutes until the lunchtime hour ends or 15 minutes after the lunchtime has ended into the next hour. So this is 1245 to 115 Eastern Standard Time. Now if I click apply, okay, apply, let's move this from the volume sub panel up to the price panel, apply one more time. And now we can see the two lines along with these dots plotting really telling us that hey volume started to increase towards the end of the lunchtime hour greater than average volume greater than average volume and even into the beginning of the next hour that same volume idea carried forward 
Now, as we see volume increase, this also tends to bring with it different changes in terms of what the volatility in the market has been preceding that moment. So for example here, in today's case, we can see the fairly sharp sell-off right after the lunchtime ends. I have this set to a one minute, 10 day uh, time frame chart. So let's go back the previous day. One more time, we can see the dots plotting, suggesting we have greater than average volume as the lunchtime is ending. Keep coming back even one day prior to that. Same thing, you can see these dots plotting. And in fact, let's make it a little easier to see these dots. I'll say signal dot set weight. And we can give this a weight of say five. Whoops, set line weight, apply. And now these dots should be a little easier to see. So one more time, we can see volume tends to rise as that lunchtime ends. We can also see the actual lunchtime hour tends to be more or less filled with chop. Most setups that might typically have a positive expectancy, you'll see that number tends to waver during the lunchtime hour, maybe even slightly decreasing. I'll give you some examples here. So if I pull up our futures volatility box, this is the S&P 500. To start off the morning, we had a nice short side setup here to start off the day. This was in the 7 to 8 a.m. Pacific hour, so an hour after the market opens. Really nice sell-off as a result of that entry. We hit T1 and T2. However, as soon as we hit the lunchtime hour here, we can see the sell-off takes price action into our volatility box clouds. We even break outside of it, so this is telling us volatility is greater than usual. We change over to the aggressive volatility box. And even though we adapt to volatility here, we can see the same sort of idea. We have our overbought, oversold signals, thinking we're going to get a bounce, but instead, sellers come right back in and bring up that volume, really leading to a downward spike. This is true in most of the broader markets. This is also true if you say, look at stocks here. Out of the overlap tab today, I think starting PHM all the way to ITB, I think even Tesco, all of these overlap breaches all took place in that lunchtime hour. So it gives you an idea of the volatility that increased out of the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine trades. Out of those nine trades, six of those nine took place as a result of the volatility during the lunchtime hour. So it really helps to illustrate the idea of how volatility increases. Funky things tend to happen during that lunchtime hour. And we can also see that demonstrated with not only volatility, but price action with the chop during the lunchtime hour and trend then resuming after, along with even these volume spikes. Let's keep coming back here to see how long this is true. So this is now October 14th, last week's activity. Same idea, volume spikes immediately after the lunchtime hour. We can also see the sharp sell-off that takes place, at least on a relative basis, once traders come back to their desk, at least the larger institutional traders. Keep coming back some more. Same sort of idea should pan uh, true here, where we see those blue dots forming, really letting you know that the volume really towards the end of the lunchtime hour and the beginning of the next hour tends to be greater than usual, at least what I think most people would expect. Now, the question comes in, should you avoid setups during the lunchtime hour? And I personally like to avoid those setups purely because I found that it keeps me more out of trouble than in terms of uh, capturing some nicer trades. However, you will have lunchtime hours like this one where say the trend continues and really the lunchtime hour was nothing more than just another hour during the day. So you can use the same piece of code here, but instead of say applying the volume condition here, plug in your own custom strategy. That might be something as simple as say a moving average crossover, anything basic, but plug that in. You can then substitute that inside of the signal variable and get an idea of what tends to happen with your strategy during the lunchtime hour. Do you have a positive expectancy or do you have a negative trade expectancy? And you can use that to make some slightly smarter decisions. I'll conclude this by going back and just seeing if there's any lunchtime hours where we don't see any blue dots plotting. But going all the way back 10 days, we can see the blue dots plotting towards the end of the lunchtime hour, really letting us know that, hey, volume does tend to rise as we're towards the end of the lunchtime hour and the beginning of next, at least compared to the volume of that day. And this is, of course, using just a one minute chart. Try changing different time frames as well for those of you curious about this entire process. And you can, of course, layer in additional conditions that make this a little bit smarter. We kept things fairly simple in this video, really just looking at volume. We looked at volatility using our 
scanner, along with the futures volatility box, but there's a lot more that I think you could layer on to really get a good understanding of the lunchtime hour, how to trade it if you are looking to trade it, or reasons to set out. I hope you found this video useful. Take care everyone, good luck trading, and I'll see you in the next update.